Again, thank you for coming out uh, to um, uh, and spend time with us. But before that, um, President or Vice President So again, thank you for coming out. And uh, so we'll just turn it over to y'all and ask questions and we'll respond back. Uh, and so we're ready. Oh. Um, and, um, uh, the media has always had problems with um, the political appointees regarding resumes. We can't, we're not, resumes aren't shared with us, so when um, president elects or vice president elects say, well, this person is qualified or they're going to be in this position, we don't know. It's, it's on their word. So are you going to share resumes of the people that are going to be holding these offices? Uh uh, that that's not going to be an issue. We just make sure that we don't share like social security numbers and those types of things <laughs> that are always on resumes. Uh, but the other thing is that we are going to do background checks on anyone that's going to come and work for us. And we've already made appointments uh, to um, uh, with these people that do that. So anyone that's coming to work for us will get a background check. Make sure that um, uh, so we already have that in motion and process and the people that will be helping us doing the background checks um, are already in place and they're anticipating uh, the names that we will turn over to them. And so when we hire somebody, first thing before we say yes to them, we're going to send them on over to, uh, to those people and they're going to check their backgrounds and let us know that they're good to go with us and, uh, because we want, a, we want an administration that is transparent and the people that we put in place, people will have confidence in. Uh, so, uh, so we already have that uh, in place, and if we uh, and we'll share uh, the background information on these people that we hire. And uh, so I think, and, and I mean that's just that's just something that every administration should do. Yes. Oh. They'll they'll also be included in the legislation when they come before the council for confirmation as well. And we will uh, include that background check on, onto the legislation as an exhibit. So it is public, will be public. In, in the past, when um, president elects and vice president elects have been um, elected, <laughs> they, they say, you know, our door is always open. But um, as media, we don't get one-on-one -on -one interviews. We don't have you know press conferences on a regular basis. I mean, they say they will, but you know. Well, so. I think uh, the the easiest way to uh, handle those things is that we have set schedule when we meet with media, so that every uh, outlet out there will know that on certain days uh, the vice president and I will be meeting with the media, and uh, so. Uh, that's the that's the best way to uh, uh, to uh, to to deal with the media. So we'll have a, a set time when the media can come and ask us questions, and uh, and we'll respond back to them. Of course, press releases will be uh, will be ongoing and on, on all issues. And uh, Manali, she, he's 39 years old. So he knows about Facebook and Twitter and those types of things. <laughs> but anyway, I, and I, I, I'm going to start off just a little. Uh, I'm going to start off with Facebook a little bit. And uh, I used to sit there in the chambers when I was council delegate and just just inform everybody. Say, okay, this issue is now on the table. What do you guys think? Mm -hmm. And uh, then uh, these. And it looks like the discussion is moving in that direction. So should we move in that direction or should we stay here and? Those types of things, and it was on everything. When we were discussing uh, NGS, uh, talking about the purchase of the mine, when we were doing 2109, the water rights issue, LCR, and all of those, I just uh, was constantly um, uh, sending word out there through Facebook. And uh, so I'm going to try that and see how far I go with it. And hopefully, uh, and see if I don't get too busy. Because I, I, I enjoy the input, I enjoy the feedback. Uh, that I get uh, through that uh, through that uh, media, 
And uh, so I will probably, uh, so I'm making a commitment and my Facebook is there already. And uh, so I, I get a lot of hits and uh, a lot of uh, 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 likes, those types of things. And uh, so I will start and just to see, let people know what we're doing and how uh, being present it uh, and what that means because it's new. I mean, we're, uh, and it really hasn't hit home yet, actually, for me uh, to serve as president. Even when I became delegate, you know, someone said, Arnold Begage. I, mean, I looked around to see who are they talking about <laughs> because no one's, at, no one's ever uh, referenced me or, uh, or called me the Honorable uh, Russell Begage. And so even that was strange to me. And, uh, but I always say that, um, uh, that it's not the title. Uh, but it's what you really are doing, what you can do for the nation. Uh, it's not a title that you carry, it's can you do the job? Uh, can you do the work? Can you accomplish the things that needs to be done? And uh, so that's what we really uh, continue to focus on. All the way through our campaign, we focus on, on getting the job done. How are we going to do it and things that we will address. It's always been about, for us, uh, about about our strategy, about our platforms, always been about that. And uh, so we, every debate we went into, and every uh, time we spoke through radio and other ways, we've always talked about our platform, our plans with veterans, talking about elders, talking about infrastructure, talking about job creation, education, and and how we're going to work with our youth and those types of things. We've always talk about just in that area and then we uh, and so I think people it just resonated with our voters out there and you saw the results of that yesterday and I think that's what we're going to continue for is continue to focus on moving the nation forward and a what so uh, some of the things that we're excited about like for example just education is um, internship is um, where you provide opportunity for our college students to come and work with one of our enterprises or with our division departments so that they can learn hands-on, get hands-on information uh, regarding the subject that they're studying. And so if they're into ag or into uh, other things, uh, we'll have internship with, let's say, with, uh, with NAPI. And then in uh, architect, maybe with NACA and those types of things. And the, inc uh, the incubator. Incubator is that a, 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 an enterprise will, uh, will raise up their own workforce and they do it by selecting individuals at the high school level even and then bring them into their shop and work with them, employ them, scholarship them all the way through four years until they get their bachelor's and maybe even beyond that into their master's and maybe uh, their doctorate. So, uh, that's how you raise up where enterprises themselves raise up uh, their, their, their leadership. And let me just say also um, we, uh, that dual credit is really important for, for us. Dual credit is a person can go to uh, a person attending high school. Uh, they will also be attending college courses. So when they graduate and get their high school diploma, they can also have an associate degree given to them at the time of their high school graduation. And that's dual credit, where you're getting uh, uh, credit from high school and credit from uh, uh, from uh, from a local college. So those are things that we want to pursue. And because our people are smart, our youth are really up there, and we just need to challenge them. You know, when you challenge our youth and uh, their smartness, and all of that just comes forward, and they just some of these guys just need to be challenged, and that's what we're about. And um, and also talking about working very closely with uh, uh, with NTU and the Net College providing opportunities for our youth uh, and also our adults uh, to get their license um, uh, in mechanic, license electrician, those types of things. And uh, so those are things that we want to provide uh, for, our, for our youth and education at all levels. So it's not just talking about a degree in, uh, in uh, like a bachelor's degree or master's, but talking about getting a license uh, to be a, a plumber. Uh, to be a, um, uh, a mechanic, those types of things. So, uh, so we're looking at all of that all the way from Head Start all the way through uh, into high school, college, and beyond. Oh, 
one last question. Um, in talking about employment and opportunities for the youth and educating them, are, are is your administration going to enforce uh, the Navajo <laughs> Preference and Employment Act regarding non-Navajos? That law states that um, they have five years, maybe 10 years, to um, train someone to take their position. Yet in the minerals department, all the times that I have been a reporter for 30 years, you have Octar Zaman still there. And also within, I think, Fish and Wildlife, you have a director there that's also been there for over 30 years. Um, so, you know, you have these people there that are not complying with the law. Well, um, the Novel Preference Employment Act is there to uh, ensure that our people have first opportunity at any job that is on the nation. And uh, we've ha we don't really enforce it as much as we should, um, especially with uh, places like uh, the power plants and the mines and other places. And uh, they really, like when we were working on NGS, uh, is that they did not want the Navajo Preference Employment Act in the, uh, in, the, in the agreement, and that was my amendment, and we fought for it, but in the end, we uh, were outvoted. And also the Navajo Business uh, Opportunity Act, mm -hmm. we inserted into the agreement, but in the end, after a long debate, they, uh, they removed, uh, they were, it was outvoted. And then th those were my amendments. And also uh, for the power plant out uh, NGS to not oppose us when we pursue our water rights. And that was a huge debate, and, uh, and we know why. Uh, because the owners of NGS, uh, they heavily use the water uh, from the Colorado River. Mm -hmm. And uh, so when I inserted it in there, they fought it and they said, if you leave it in there, we are going to pack up and leave. And, but it was a negotiation, you know, and, uh, and so we need to really negotiate hard. And that's what I think will be one of the hallmarks of our administration, is that we will negotiate very hard on behalf of our Navajo people that want to, uh, that are looking for jobs, and even some of the positions that you mentioned here on the nation, and also as we uh, as we renew contracts agreement with outside um, uh, companies uh, to make sure that if they're going to come here, that they give opportunities to our people uh, for employment first, and also on the other hand, also with the with businesses, is that anytime there are contracts that are being out there, subcontracts. Uh, con subcontracting opportunities that our small business owner be given the first opportunity and uh, uh, to uh, uh, to bid on those jobs. So the other one, talking about small business, is that we have a lot of people out there that, uh, that are that have started businesses, whether it's in like simple things like um, automobile windshield replacement, and uh, so they could, you know, and and they're being denied opportunity to do that with our um, with the nation and we, we we farm out a lot of these contracts to outside contractors and uh, so we, we we will enforce that we have people out there not only those are running businesses but we have people entrepreneurs that want to get businesses started so let's say that we're building a, a huge <coughs> complex somewhere is that we will come alongside any Navajo uh, that wants to start up a business in an in, in electrician it's where, where he can bring a team together, get their business going and give them an opportunity to, to work on that building because that will give them the upstart funds that they need so that they can, uh, they, they can grow their business and a lot of it is just that it's just helping them, walking with them and and getting their business license, getting their team together, and their and marketing concepts, and all of those things, and how they hire staff, and some tax incentives that is, that are out there, some government program that they can uh, that they can apply for uh, to to uh, to really uh, undergird the business that they're trying to start. It's just to walk with them, get their businesses off the ground, give them contracts, and get them into the, into the system of being a business owner and, uh, and make them successful. Uh, so a lot of time we just say, you know, if, you, if, you're, if you're an owner in this particular profession, uh, come and apply and, and we, may not, we may have the expertise, but we don't have those businesses that are, that, that are going. 
And so, but the expertise out there, let's get those guys together, help them get the business started so they can uh, bid on those contracts. And, and, let's, and let's let our people become rich, let our people become, uh, you know, gain well, uh, those types of things. And it's about time that we do that. We, we spend so much money and, and, uh, <laughs> and a contract with outside sources and some of those very same things our people could utilize. And uh, any quotation, so Jonathan? All right, well, um, on, on the question about uh, the media, you know, we, we did a lot to open the door uh, to the media on the council side during uh, our tenure on the 22nd council, mm -hmm. as well as the 23rd. Uh, I like the idea that was brought forth by uh, Mr. Sosi. He does have good ideas, uh, and uh, a, a Navajo C-SPAN to be done. I think transparency for both offices, both uh, branches, and if a Navajo C-SPAN were to ever uh, be, you know, developed, I think that will uh, have that uh, door open for media on both sides, the executive and the legislative. So uh, I think that's. Uh, coming forth. Uh, we just need to put some money on the broadcasting services side to do that. And the other thing I, I want to mention too is, you know, I, I think we need to uh, do a lot more uh, televising uh, a lot of the events here in Winter Rock to our senior citizen centers out there and our youth centers and live stream. So, you know, technology is there. As my Nully said, uh, I'm not a Facebooker, <laughs> uh, but, but you know, I mean, that, that's a tool utilized very effectively. But uh, you know, as as I talk to the youth out there, I always say, take care of yourself when you're using social media. Mm -hmm. It's a Absolutely. good tool to have, but it's all real. It's some sometimes it's used negative negatively, and you know, you, you need to balance yourself in social media as well. You know. Uh, you know, if you bombard yourself with that negativity constantly, it, it does, you know, all those ideas go into your mind. Uh, just as our parents always say, you know, the people you hang out with the most, that's who you will act like, you know. And if you embrace yourself and put yourself into negative social media, you know, uh, the end result is just that. So, you know, and I always say, just take care of yourself on that. Uh, that's one discussion that we need to have as a nation. I've heard it in the pulpit before, uh, but it needs to be, uh, that message needs to go out uh, nationwide, globally, really. But um, I just wanted to say thank you. Uh, like I said, uh, I still have a job. I was, I was at the council at 7.30. It's 10 a.m. now, and you know, I need to get to the council chambers. So, uh, Russell here. <laughs> we'll, we'll continue the press conference. And, uh, thank you. And uh, you know, like I said, the job continues, and it does, even with me, the job continues. I'm not going to neglect my job on the council. Uh, I need to continue my work there until uh, the rains, the, you know, the rains get given to us through the inauguration process. So, when is that going to happen? The inauguration? Uh, well, it, it is mentioned by the election office to be on the 11th. 12th, 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 but um, we'll see what happens on, on that side. It would be great to have it sooner um, yes. so that we can move on uh, and, and get this administration going. So uh, I'm going to leave you. My apologies. This is not, uh, I, I, like I said, I, 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 when the job is given to me, I, I have to do it full, wholeheartedly. So I got to get to the council chambers so to represent my four chapters. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Blue House. First of all, I want to congratulate you, you two gentlemen up there. You gentlemen made a whole lot of people real happy across the country. Yes. <laughs> it seemed like she somewhere along the way that you might be slipping just a little bit, but you picked up and went all the way without looking back. And I'm, I'm so happy that most people here, and of course across the country. So uh, 
after that, I was going to go to Hojo. And we campaigned a little bit too, like making calls to known individuals across the Navajo Nation. And so, in that sense, then uh, I'm most happy to be a part of the uh, camp. Now, the question I have, uh, Mr. President, is uh, we have a long stretch of I 40. Clear from Albuquerque down to Flagstaff. Absolutely. We also have a stretch of rail road out there. And there's a need for uh, products by consumers. And Gallup here about, what, two or three weeks ago, and also in Gallup Independent, they they, they were looking down the road about 20 years in terms of what they want. But the thing that I saw there was that they got their arms around Navajo Nation, but it's basically the dollars that are there. And they want to capitalize on it, and they want to increase the, the, the business through the, 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 the mobile traffic as well as railroad. They want to build big facilities there in, in Gallup, and I think that uh, they're, they're down the road with that. Now, I believe that, and I'm sure that this is on your mind as well, that being that we have that uh, improvements that are there with uh, uh, people coming from across the country, Los Angeles clear to uh, Chicago, there's tremendous opportunity. We also have a piece of property down at Chambers. You, you know about that, the old ram pasture. And then there's some others. And uh, I dream someday that we got to capitalize on that uh, railroad as well as uh, uh, national highway that's there. So uh, hopefully that one way or another I'll still be a part of it like most young people here as well as uh, Mr. Za here. So, again, thank you very much. So, okay, la, thank you. So, Ani, uh, so appreciate the uh, the support and and just the excitement that was there yesterday. I mean, everybody was excited about uh, voting. You know, finally, we have an opportunity to vote, and uh, they were out there, and like I said earlier, didn't matter who they were voting for, it was uh, Begay Nez or Shirley Benali, they were just excited about at least finally getting a chance to vote. And uh, so it was a beautiful thing to see. And I talked a little earlier about grandmas, uh, barely could barely walk, making their way into the chapter house to vote, and others being uh, transported by, by wheelchair into the, um, into the uh, chapter house. Uh, just to vote, you know, it's, uh, it's a privilege, and especially our elders, I think, really understand uh, just the privilege of getting out there to the chapter house and voting for a leader. Uh, and and they, they value it, uh, and they will not miss an opportunity to vote for somebody. And uh, so yesterday was an opportunity for that, and so they were, I saw a lot of, a lot of elders out there uh, voting. Uh, on behalf of uh, their, uh, the people that they support. So uh, it was good to see. It was really good to see uh, the joy and the smiles on, the, uh, uh, on these people getting out there and voting and, uh, and also people uh, at the various camps, you know, and uh, uh, tasting the food and all that kind of stuff. Just kind of like a whole, just a whole day of, uh, of anticipating uh, who will be the next president, vice president, leading the nation for a call. Ah, Ani. Uh, and the all the on Interstate 40 is that we have massive amount of revenue, potential revenue flowing back and forth on Interstate 40, uh, and and we just need to really understand what that market is first, because how do you get these individual that are driving back and forth, pull them off the freeway? and come and buy your product or utilize your products. And what is it that they're looking for? What, is, what will make them stop and come and, and, and put money into, uh, into your business that you, that you offer? So I think it is really important. And we have like Twin Arrows. We anticipated when Twin Arrows was being, uh, being discussed. They said we, you know, they were saying we have all of these uh, in the millions, traffic flowing back and forth. 
And uh, so it was just people were saying, you know, all of these, we'll, we're going to draw these people off the freeway. They'll come to Twin Arrows and they'll gamble, they'll eat, they'll sleep and all of that. And, um, but it's not happening at the level we thought. And so somewhere we missed the, mar uh, the market uh, that flows back and forth. So uh, we need to, uh, to really look at that closely. And there are uh, Navajo people out there that know how to, uh, how to do that. And we need to hire them, our own people, to, uh, to do the market analysis. Because even Gallup, I don't think a lot of people stop in Gallup. They just kind of zip through there and on their way they may uh, get gas if they need it, but they're on their way. And they and it's our people's money that, that's holding up the market in Gallup and Holbrook, Winslow, Flag and those places. And I told uh, the other day uh, the folks in Gallup, I said, if, you re if we remove the Navajo dollar from Gallup, Gallup will go bankrupt. They will go belly up. And uh, so... Uh, and, and that's so our money is is upholding the economy in Gallup and Gallup is what it is because of Navajo dollars and uh, so but the flow of traffic back and forth from east to west uh, I, I we just really need to do a really thorough market analysis and capture uh, uh, that money that that flows back and forth and I and uh, whether it's in in uh, servicing or in uh, I, I, we, we just have to look at it. And I think, uh, and the other thing is that when we do start it, we need to make sure that, uh, that it's a, of the highest quality. Uh, whatever service with, uh, that, we pro that we will provide to people that are driving back and forth. And the other one is, um, and, and talking about job creation, is that we are huge importers. We import about everything that we use on the nation. Uh, whatever it is, whether it's housing, uh, concrete, foundation, um, whatever it is, we buy everything from the outside. We import. Any nation that will sustain itself, they need to become exporters. And so the rail is, is great, it runs all the way into Los Angeles, and then <laughs> from there into the world, the world market. And so we talked about uh, producing uh, things like our own pro panels uh, that we now use um, uh, to build houses and all of those we buy from the outside if we produce those to market it here and do a great job with it uh, we can market it uh, globally using the rail lines uh, we talk about um, at Nappy they use massive amount of sacks containers for beans for flour for uh, potatoes and those types of things and all of that we buy from the outside. And our people, I know we have uh, people that can, can make those sacks, uh, sew them together, glue them together, however it's made. And we put together really uh, top-notch quality sacks. We can market that globally. Uh, but we need to start making those, put our people to work, keep our monies here. And then uh, I always talk about uh, that when you put something like that together, is that it spawns. It creates other opportunities uh, because these workers they have to eat someplace so restaurants are going up they have to put gas in their cars so gas stations are going up they have to they like to cook food at, at the house so grocery stores are going up they like to go to entertainment so the next thing you know you have a theater bowling alley those types of things going up and now we our people are in are very health conscious so now you have a gym that somebody opens up and all of those provide additional employment and, and you, just, you just see a whole town just really rising up, uh, eliminating unemployment, keeping the money here, uh, and turning the money over several times. And, the, and, and we say that on Navajo Nation, we get a dollar, and then we send it back out. Uh, we don't turn it over here. We need to turn, if we can turn the dollar over seven times, then we'll have a really strong economy. Right now, we're turning a dollar at the most, maybe once, <coughs> occasionally three times. Uh, but most of it is just we get it and then we ship it back out. And uh, so, ADG, uh, so we have the, uh, uh, there's infrastructure in place, as you mentioned, Shanantani, uh, to, to do that. <laughs> uh, Hatsi, eh, that's his eh. 
I call your administration with that your uh, see the BA I'm a member of the BA what they call it group group one group one priority that's where uh, my name is and then it runs on to fifth I, I get uh, I get some benefit I, I get to this what they, they, they they owe me. But there's some people, some of the veterans could get some of those share, but it's the it's the language that the veteran has to versus the VA. That's where the Namho tried in 1959. Uh, 59. We want the, we want the Navajo government to help us to bridge us to this veteran's benefit. So I like to have your administration to look into the VA all the way to the their department head. We need a better better service from the government. And where they, they where, where they <coughs> should fall, we let the try try to help these veterans. I got a lot of veterans that I know, all the way from the street homeless to LED house to hospital now. They never did say or why or I don't know why they they, they are there like that and they're still helpless. They should have a provider for some sufficient service and so. I'm not I, I'm not all that good about these things, but 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 I see but I hit I lost my hair in the one with the first oh. award. Oh. But I'm I'm still here. Oh. I'm eighty four three years old. Oh. But it's a matter of uh, oh. to be living at this long. It's to take care of yourself. Oh. Respect, oh. honor, oh. love. That's, that's the way I like. I, I think that's the, that the I think we need to t teach our youth about these diseases that we get. That's part of the government. See, in my time, there's a there's when there's schism sticking. There's a bit schism. Ask no question. But when the governor came up and says he abusing the child, that, that thing went to hell. I'll tell you, that's all that diabetes and these unhealthy things, that's what they grew in. Mm -hmm. But we were, I'm just fortunate to went through that. So I cut out of what I'm in such case, I understand. A veteran do need a help. They need, we need to have them to be uh, consulate in order to get what they really need. And uh, I, I think your administration's leadership would uh, match up just what I, I'm talking about. I say it. Well, thank you. This concludes our press conference for this morning. Again, we thank you for coming. I know that he's given every opportunity for so many young people. I was one of the people that was living in Washington, D.C. I'm the former communications director for the National Indian Health Board. I used to live six uh, blocks down from where the Senate was and Congress was. And I know how much advocacy means to the Navajo people. And so I'm very grateful today that we do have an awakening of a new dawn with a new president and new vice president. Ahiehet.